Mm. How often should we be taking our sets to failure? Uh, that hugely depends on a few things. One is, do you like it? Do you tolerate it well? Some people train to failure, they love it, and they recover no problem. That's me, I would say. My man. Yeah. Some people hate it, and it destroys their recovery. That's probably more like me. <laughs> uh, so a lot of that's just kind of personal preference. The other big factor is how much volume are you doing? If you're doing two or three sets per muscle per workout, yeah, all of them can be to failure, no problem in most cases, and beyond, four straps and all that stuff. If you're doing eight, 10, 12 sets per muscle per session, two or three times a week, you could be taking all those to failure, but it's probably not gonna get you the best results. Mm. So a few reps shy of failure is probably good. I would say at the end of every mesocycle or four to six, four to eight week stretch of consistent training, you should be getting close to or to failure, at least at the end of that, to shit test yourself to see are your reps in reserve really what you think they are or not. Because you could say to yourself, well, I'm stopping about two reps shy of failure. And someone's like, dope, this is your last week, right? You're like, uh-huh. So you got hack squats programmed? Uh-huh. 225? Uh-huh. What'd you do last week? 12? Dope. Get to 12. You get to 12, you look at the person, they're like, two more. You're like, okay, what's going to be failure at 14? You get 14, and they're like, two more. And you're like, you're crazy, but you do it. And 16, 18, 21, your legs are wobbling, and they have to catch the, the machine and rack it for you. But you thought you were training two reps in reserve, mm. and your plan was to do 12 reps. And like, okay, I'm training a failure today, I'm gonna hit 14. But in reality, even your 14 was seven reps in reserve. And so really the entire time you thought you were training two reps in reserve, you are training nine reps in reserve. How would you know that at all if you didn't really push it and mm. go, I'm gonna try to get as many reps as I can. That's a good time in the gym to put the headphones in, turn on some not so great childhood memories, <laughs> whatever it takes. Um, or really, the childhood memory stuff, that could get you getting real psychotic, it's a bit much. Really push the limits, at least once every two months. Great workout, maybe unsustainable for many people to do that all the time, but at least references your relative efforts for next time. Because you could say, okay, I thought 14 reps was gonna be failure, but I really got 17. So I know next, Time I create my new mesocycle for my next two, two to one to two months of training. What's a mesocycle? A mesocycle. A mesocycle so, ugh, sports science speak. A microcycle is like your weekly, roughly a week length plan. Mm. It's when you train all of the training days that you have in your plan, and then you, you get to the next one where you're like, okay, what did I do last week on Monday? That's one microcycle. A summation of microcycles, which leads in you getting a ton of fatigue and you can't do it anymore, and you need a little time off. That's a mesocycle, mm. usually about one to two months. Multiple mesocycles linked together to achieve a big goal, like a fat loss phase that lasts 12 weeks, composed of two or three mesocycles, that's a macro cycle. So with a mesocycle duration, if you finish a mesocycle, a couple months of good training, and at the end you test yourself on everything and push to the limits and you realize like, you know, you're about three reps away from everything that I thought, you know that at the beginning of your next mesocycle, push it a little harder than you typically do at least a few more reps because in that first week you're like oh i think this is three reps away from failure and you rack it now you know you're a bullshit artist to yourself you don't have to tell anyone about it it's just like uh and then you're like you know what i'm gonna do two more <laughs> yeah, that was really hard but it's good you could learn the opposite thing you could think man i'm gonna hit failure it's gonna be like 16 reps and you hit 14 and the next day you hit like three you look totally dilapidated like, man, I've been telling myself I start with three reps in reserve, three reps away from failure at the beginning of the whole mesocycle plan. But to be honest, it really looks like I just go one or even zero reps. So if I really want to start a little bit away from failure, I got to next time my mesocycle starts that first week, instead of being like, do more, I got to be like, you know what, Mike, just I just rack the weight. Write that number down, your hypertrophy app, and next week it'll increase, 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 and then it'll be a logical progression. So without that going to failure or close every now and again, it's all guesses. And uh, we've seen in laboratory studies that some people are very good at guessing, a lot of people are not good at guessing. But generally you wanna go, I don't necessarily know if you, if, if you are able to go to failure every set, if that's ideal or whatnot. It's not. It, it's not ideal. It's similar in results to anything one, two, or three reps shy of failure. Similar in results. So, yeah. But you do want to get close to it. Correct. And close counts as three or four reps from failure. Got it. In most cases. You can tell what that is decently, not perfectly, 
with two things, and it's super simple, right in the gym through experience. Thing one is, does the bar perceptively start to feel, or bar, or dumbbells or machine, perceptively start to feel heavier towards the end of a set? Again, I'm not trying to dog on LA Fitness. A lot of people, not all, some people they are just grinding, right? But some people, you watch them do like a chest press machine and they're like, mm, 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 and they rack and you're like, was it a warm up or a working set? <laughs> yeah. If I can't look and see which one it is, you're not training hard enough. Uh, so if those people perceptively were like, okay, I'm not gonna stop the set until like it's normal, 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 and then, oh my God, it feels way heavier after a few reps. Get one or two reps into that discomfort, heavy feeling. Now you're in the conversation for getting close enough to failure. Mm. Another way to tell is if you're not purposefully limiting your concentric velocity, if you're moving the weights up about as quickly as you can, just the only thing slowing you down is that they're heavy. If the weights slow down physically while you're doing a set, you're getting close to failure. So if you watch someone and all the rep speed's identical, they could be just not trying very hard at the beginning, but trying hard at the end, and then thus it all looks the same. Advanced lifters will do that in hypertrophy, so you can't tell. But for them, it feels way heavier in the last one, so we check that box. But for a lot of people, they're moving up and down, da, 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 and then rack, you're like, what the hell, it didn't even slow down. But for most people, uh, 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 I'm up and down, up and down, and then at some point, the reps are much slower on the way up. The way down's the same, and then they're much slower. So if you can get either the reps slow down, or they feel a lot heavier towards the end, or both, you're in the conversation for failure training, and then as long as next week you add a little bit of weight to the bar, or add a rep to all of your set goals, you're good from there on, because then you're at least at that bottom end of that failure spectrum, and then you, you get through it all the way up and then get, get to failure. If your first few weeks of training are so easy that neither you nor anyone else can tell that you're trying very hard, you gotta do a few more reps. I would say that's one of the biggest mistakes that I see people making in the gym. Most people in the gym, I would say, like they 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 have their they don't look like they're straining in any significant way. Yeah. And I watch them, you know, when I'm getting my steps in on the treadmill, I'm like looking out at the gym, big open floor plan in my gym, and very few people, like a small minority of the people. I mean, look, if you're in the gym, that's it's good. It's already great. That's 100%. Great. There's all just details here. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I do feel like I see uh, like a, a very common, um, you know, area where people are not working out to their full poten potential. They're racking the weights after, you know, with like barely a grunt. An indeterminate amount of reps was done yeah. and we racked based on no criteria whatsoever. A lot of people, as soon as they even sniff out some discomfort, they'll just rack it. Mm. It's like, I'm not in here for this. It's not the worst thing in the world because at least if you start to feel like you're uncomfortable, you're getting close to challenging yourself and you're going to get some good results, not your best results. That's cool. But what you want to do is the opposite of when you sniff out that it's getting hard, push a little further. That's when you know it's time to hit that switch and go. Mm. It's telling you it's working, you know. Uh, is this an adult show or what's yes. the, okay. We have so, that explicit rating. Excellent. This point. Excellent. So it's kind of like when you're, you know, with a consenting uh, partner and, and you're getting you know, that feeling when you're getting close. It's like some people at the gym, they're like, oh, 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 I got to back off. Like, what are we here for a marathon session? When that feeling gets the feeling, that means you're doing it. Keep going, damn it. So that feeling of the bar slowing down, of real heavy weight, the burn, that's kind of like your invitation to do a few more reps, not to stop. Hmm. Uh, that's probably the best way to look uh, at it. And you're absolutely 100% correct. A ton of people at the gym just don't train hard enough. Yeah. What I would say my best recommendation to those people is, and people coaching them, isn't to flip the script on them and be like, you're a pussy, you fucking, your life is an embarrassment at this point. You need to like just listen to Goggins for like 10 hours. Don't sleep. <laughs> 10 hours of Goggins, so it replaces your sleep last day. Come into the gym and just go to literal war. Like that when you bring a belt with grenades on it, we're gonna throw them, like that kind of stuff. Everything to failure, psychotic streaming, is neither necessary, uh, nor is it conducive to people actually listening to you, because they're gonna be like, okay, I'll try it. They try it, they're like, this is insane. I didn't sign up for this shit. So I think maybe a little bit uh, of the approach I like better is to tell people when they're not training hard, like, dude, you're doing really, really good. Can I give you a tip about how to do even better? They're like, well, yeah. Just push it a little bit harder than you used to. And if that gets pretty easy or pretty manageable, just go a little bit harder. We want this idea of just inching our way a little bit closer to the flame. 
a little bit closer to the flame. And if you can do that without getting burned, and you're not getting burned, you just go to failure and you're like, oh, that was all I had. Recycle, repeat, come back around. So just a little harder than you're typically used to is probably a good thing. Now, if you start real low, you might have to do months of a little bit harder to get even to that zone of real difficulty. So there's a nuance, there's a conversation there. But it's really, really good to make sure that you're encouraging people two things. One, the fact that you're here and you're trying it all, that's tier one shit. That's what's really super important. Next, let's try to make it a little bit more challenging. Not a ton. We're not trying to make you John Rambo take over the fucking world. Just a little bit of a step in the direction of discomfort. And if that's like, ooh, that's all I can handle, great. See you next time. And next time, we'll just do the same thing. And when you feel like, oh, this is pretty easy, it's pretty good, take a little bit of a step toward the flame again. That, that's my best take. Hey, if you like that video, you need to check out this one here, and I'll see you there.